How Galaxies Populate the Halos in Extreme Density Environments by Ignacio Germán Alfaro in collaboration with Andrés Nicolás Ruiz, Facundo Rodríguez, Diego García Lambas and Eliana Luparello. This video is based on the content of these two papers. As we know, when we take different spatial scales, we observe that the universe forms several structures. When we talk about large-scale astronomy, we are talking about the scale in order of hundreds of megaparsecs. The structure that forms the universe is known as cosmic web. If we take larger spatial scale, the universe turns homogeneous and isotropic. For this reason, we can consider that the cosmic web is the larger structure in the universe, and it mostly consists of dark matter, baryonic gas, and galaxies. The group of galaxies form and reside within dark matter halos. This means that there is a correlation between baryonic matter and the dark matter. The problem is that the formation and evolution of a galaxy involve many, many, many complex astrophysic and gravitational phenomena, which make it extremely difficult to know precisely just from a group of galaxies, how is their host halos, and vice versa. For this purpose is that we study the halo occupation distribution, or just H of D. The H of D is a statistical tool that describes the probability that a virialized dark matter halo with mass MH contains n galaxies with a specific set of characteristics, for example, being blue. At the first time, we can approximate the H of D by the mean number of galaxies with these properties in a bin of halo masses centered on MH. Normally, the H of D assumes that the population of galaxies in a halo depends only its mass. In general, we don't know the shape that the H of D has and at large, this depends mostly on the characteristic that we are considering. By example, this is the H of D for galaxies with magnitude lower than a limit value. This means that the halo with MH10 to 14 is populated by more of 10 galaxies with magnitude brighter than MR-17. The same halo has a few galaxies brighter than minus 20 and only one galaxy brighter than minus 21. For many years, we assumed that the H of D only depends on halo masses. This means, for example, that no matter the place in the universe, the dark matter halo with MH10 to 14 is will always going to host n galaxies with magnitude lower than minus 17. But Many recent studies show that it might be a dependency between the H of D and the environmental density that surround the dark matter halos. For this reason, we decided to explore the behavior of the H of D in two of the large scale structures with extreme density values. These are the cosmic voids and the future viralized structures. The cosmic void. The cosmic voids are the region on large scale structure with the lowest value of density. The definition that we adopted for this is that of Padillian collaborator, according to whom the voids are the spherical region with some superposition in which inferior the integral density parameter delta is lower than a limit value. To identify the voids, we use the method described in Ruiz and collaborator of 2015. This consists of doing a Voronoi tessellation over the position of the galaxy with air absolute magnitude lower than minus 20. With this, we localize the region that meets our density criteria. So, through the Monte Carlo method, we determine the biggest sphere that covers this region and fulfill our density criteria. At last, we remove the sphere that overlap. To this, in each void candidate, we obtain our boy catalog, the future virality structure, or just FBS. 
The intersection of filaments and walls can form knots, which are the densest environment in the large scale structure. Under the current cosmological model, some of this overdense region will be compound and be realized in the structure in the future, known as supercluster. To identify the FBS, we make a grid of cubes with 1 megaparsec bat size overall the galaxy catalog. In each cube, we assume a constant relationship mass luminosity and construct a luminosity density field using a convolution between the spatial distribution of galaxy with a kernel function weighted by the galaxy luminosity. After this, we identify the region more luminosity dense of the universe and employ a theoretical calculus we determine the cells that will remain bound in the field. This is how it looks one of our MVS. The MDPL SAC catalog. To study both region, we use a dark matter simulation, the multidark, plus a semi-analytic model and constructed a catalog of semi-analytic galaxies, the MDPL2 SAC. In this, we identify voice and FBS, obtaining this number of structure. To the voice, we can repeat all the measure in an hydrodynamic simulation, obtaining very similar results, but for reason of time, I will not be discussing this further in this video. So, you can always send an inquiry after this talk. The principal result. All these results are measured by using a data stacking. In both region we detect relevant variation on the H of D. About the void, we found that the halos with mass greater than 10 to 12 have fewer satellite galaxies than that they should. This difference increase when we take limit value of density to more extreme. For that, we decide to base our studies in voids with less than 10% of the mean density of the universe represented in the figure by the red dotted line. Meanwhile, in the FVAs, the HFD differences are more suited, but these appear in the bottom panel that show the ratio between the HFD FVAs and the overall HFD. We show that the halos with mass greater than 10 to 13 have more satellite galaxies than the mean. This behavior becomes more important in the inner and densest regions of the FBS, represented in the figure by the dotted red lines. In both cases, the result is present for different magnitude threshold, including galaxies with R absolute magnitude brighter than, than minus 20. We also studied the stellar content of the galaxy in these structures mainly the stellar mass of the central and satellite galaxies. In voids, we found that the mean stellar mass of the central galaxies are, in general, a 10% lower than the average. For the satellite, the results are the same in halos with mass lower than 10 to 13. To this point, the mass of the satellite falls considerably. On the other hand, to the FBS, the central and satellite galaxies show stellar masses considerably greater than the mean in halos with masses lower than 10 to 13. For halos with more mass, the central has normal values of stellar mass, and the satellite falls to the half of the mean value. To explore a possible cause for the variations, we studied the formation times of halos in both regions. To this, we defined the formation redshift like the redshift in which a halo accreted the half of his maximum mass for the first time. The figure shows the cumulative fraction of formation redshift from the halos in void with the red line, and the mean result for the complete catalog with the dark line. As we see, the halos in void get formed later than the mean, so, they are younger. The opposite is the case of FBS. Their halos show a greater cumulative frequency than the mean. So, they are formed first and are older. As final summary, for example, we take a halo with mass lower than 10 to 13. 
in the normal condition, they have a central galaxy with some satellites. But inside the void, the same halo has a central galaxy with a few less stellar masses, with a reduced number of satellites with lowest stellar mass too. Meanwhile, in the FBAs, the halo have the same number of satellites, but both the central and satellite galaxies have more stellar mass than the average. If now we take a halo with masses greater than 10 to 13, the halo have more satellite galaxy. But when it is inside the void, their number reduces considerably, equally than their stellar mass. In the FBS, the number of satellites increase with respect to the mean, but their stellar mass is reduced. We conclude that exists a correlation between the particular history of the formation of a halo in regions with extreme value of density and the way that the galaxies populate. This that reflects onto their formation redshift, the variation on the H of D, and even the astrophysical properties that their galaxy populate have. I present you the big biography for this work. Thanks for your attention, and I am grateful to all who helped me to make this video. If you have an inquiry or are just interested in more of our work, please do not hesitate about contact me.